Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So today we will be once again talking about the NHL National Hockey League as long as we have to get all these previews for the playing round series done as quickly as possible. This is uh, the basically the seventh preview I am doing and we have got still one left so it will be the Battle of the Western Conference next uh, Calgary Flame against Winnipeg Jets but today we'll be uh, talking about a series between Toronto Maple Leafs and Columbus Blue Jackets um, Toronto 8th in the Eastern Conference with 81 points Columbus 9th with the exactly same point total, so with 81 points. So really there isn't any difference between these two teams, they both have the exactly same amount of points, so both of these teams have been playing very, very uh, like each other, uh, they have approximately the same records of the wins, overtime losses, uh, shootout wins, etc, etc. So these are both very, very evenly matched. I would say probably the, the most evenly matched series we will see in the playing round and I'm very excited to see how it will all evolve and who will eventually come out at the top. So when we look at the head-to-head -head matchups these two teams had this year or this season, the first game they played each other it was on the 5th of October 2019 and it was a decisive 4-1 victory for Toronto and the other game they played this season was on the 22nd of October 2019 and Toronto lost 3-4 after extra time. So one win for, Colum for Columbus, one win for Toronto in the in the head-to-head -head matchups this season, but they haven't played each other since the 22nd of October. So the restart or the first first match of this playing round series, I believe, is scheduled to be on the 1st of August, 2nd of August, something like that. So really, they will not play each other for what for like eight, almost eight nine, eight months, almost nine months. So it will be a very long time since those two teams last met and it will be very interesting series to watch, I'm sure. Okay, so let's go to the Toronto Maple Leafs and look at their side very quickly. Their most productive guy this year, of course, it was the American guy, Austin Matthews, with 80 points, 47 goals, 33 assists, a brilliant year for Austin Matthews. However, he was not nominated for the Hart Trophy because there were definitely uh, some better players in the NHL this year than Austin Matthews himself but with 47 goals definitely an impressive performance by the American guy and kudos to him. Number, se uh, number two most productive guy in Toronto, Mitch Marner with 67 points, the local guy from Ontario, 16 goals, 51 assists, a great season for him as well. So, uh, Mana, great season. And he was playing along John Tavares. Was, John Tavares had 60 points, 26 goals, 34 assists. So really, John Tavares and, also, uh, and Mitch Mana showed this year some very good chemistry between them. And I think they will be uh, very, very dangerous in the playoffs. And Columbus must pay very close attention to Mitch Mana and John Tavares in their line. When we look at goalies of the Toronto Maple Leafs, they have their, their best goalies this year. To no one's surprise was the, the guy from Denmark, so Frederick Anderson with 90.9%. A safe percentage and the second one Jake Campbell I I do believe he was acquired in a trade with the Los Angeles Kings and his safe percentage is 90.4 so really there is no doubt who will be the starter unless Frederick Anderson will be injured which I hope I think every Maple Leafs fan hopes that he won't and every true hockey fan should hope that he won't be uh, injured then Frederick Anderson of course would be the starter and Toronto has had some considerable problems with the number two goaltender and they still have them right uh, 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 when we take off Kim like in uh, instead of Campbell the number two goaltender the only other choice I could see would be Kaskisuo 
or Koski Suo, I'm sorry for the pronunciation, I'm not completely sure uh, how his name is written, but it's that, uh, it's that Finnish guy, so really, uh, they don't have a good backup right now, and Toronto really with signing of Mitch Mana, Austin Matthews, John Tavares, and maybe also William Nylander, with signing those four offensive players for over 40 millions that really doesn't leave you with many cap space left and that's a big problem for Toronto the building of defense and the building of good goaltending tandem because Frederick Anderson definitely a great goaltender but he needs that backup to make sure that he won't be overplayed and maybe if Anderson was even overplayed this year it doesn't matter thanks to the coronavirus post, so that's a very positive effect for Toronto that Frederick Anderson would be rested and would be ready to play in the playoffs, so a big plus there for Toronto. Time on ice, the leaders, two defensemen, the first one Morgan Riley with 24 minutes, 12 seconds averaging per game, and number two Tyson Berry who was acquired in a trade with Colorado Avalanche earlier this season. 21 minutes, 52 seconds averaging per game. So definitely those two very important. We know that Morgan Riley was injured, um, so he has broken his bone. So very, very unfortunate. But Riley should be back, I do believe, for Toronto Maple Leafs. So another very big plus for Toronto out there. Special teams for Toronto. The power play, good. With that offensive talent, no surprise that the power play is very good. 23.1%. Uh, fifth in the league, however, penalty kill not that good, 77.7%, 21st in the league, so they need to improve their penalty kill, although the power play of Columbus is really not that strong, so they really don't have to worry really about the power play of Columbus. Uh, goals for 237, so Toronto, as you may expect, with, as I have said, with that offensive talent, with Tavares, Mana, with Matthews, with Nylander, they have been scoring a heck amount of a goals, 237, however, they also uh, allowed a lot of goals, 222. So right now, let's move forward to Columbus side of the board, so when we look at the Columbus, uh, currently, 81 points, 9 in the league, their best, uh, the most productive guy, Pierre-Luc Dubois with 49 points, 18 goals, 31 assists, good season for him, number 2, Gustav Nyquist, 42 points, 15 goals only, 27 assists, and what's very important, number 3, or very interesting, uh, so to say, it's Zach Varensky, the American defender, defenseman, with 41 points, 20 goals, 21 assists. So Zach Varensky is the second best goal scorer of the Columbus Blue Jackets and he has scored more goals than, for example, Nyquist or Pierre-Luc Dubois. So that's very interesting. Varensky and his 20 goals, um, where he was very important for Columbus, I'm sure, and his goals were made a very big impact for Columbus this season. Uh, number first, uh, number one goaltender, Elvis Merzlikens, the guy from Latvia with a uh, goal just 92.3 safe percentage. Number, uh, number two, Jonas Korpisalo with 91.1 uh, safe percentage. I do believe that Baron Slikens would be the starter. He has been playing well this year. Of course, he has not played that large amount of games, but I think he looks uh, to be in a good shape. We'll see how he will do in his first playoffs in the NHL in his career. Um, I'm eager to see how he will do. Number one, according to time on ice average, is Seth Jones with 25 minutes and 16 seconds over 25 minutes. That's really rare to see, but Seth Jones was playing a heck amount of minutes. And also Zach Berensky, his defensive partner, 23 minutes, 59 seconds, so almost 24 minutes. So Seth Jones and Zach Berensky, definitely the most important guys on the blue line for Columbus and one of the most important players for Columbus overall. When we look at power play percentage, as I have said earlier, it's not the best, 16.4%. 
on a 27th in the league. However, penalty kill is a little bit better, or actually a lot better. 81.7%, 12th in the league, so that's that's pretty good, but they have to improve their power play when they want to be successful against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Goals for, according to Columbus, 180 goals against 183. So, we also have to mention that Columbus had multiple, multiple injuries throughout the course of the season. Uh, Dubois, I believe, was injured, Nyquist was injured, Seth Jones was injured, Zeko Varensky was injured, Cam Atkinson was injured. Uh, I do believe also Josh Anderson was injured, so everybody that could have been injured was injured, unfortunately for Columbus, and uh, therefore I want to give a really big, uh, yeah, really big congratulations to John Tortorella for being able to even carry Columbus into playoffs and to be on the ninth position, ninth position, sorry, I think I think that with those amount of injuries. And um, yeah, basically how unlucky Columbus was throughout the course of whole season. I think that John Tortorella did a very good job. And that, uh, yeah, when all the players of Columbus would be healthy and would be ready to play in the playing round series, I think that could be a big problem for Toronto. And Toronto, I would say, even though they finished with exactly the same point totals as Columbus, are our clear favorite in this series. I think that the most of the people or the fans watching in NHL would say, yeah, I think that Toronto would win this one. They are favorite thanks mostly to their very, very strong offensive part of the game with those superstars that we have mentioned before. But Columbus should be all healthy, should be ready to go. No injuries for Columbus, everybody in place, ready to play, and that could be a very big problem for Toronto, because even this power play, 16.4%, yes, but they were mostly without those key guys that would definitely improve this power play percentage. So really, it would be a very interesting matchup to see, and we all know how Columbus played in the first round of last year's playoffs against Tampa Bay Lightning, the very popular um, or viral sweep of Columbus 4-0 over one of the best teams according to point totals in the history of NHL. So really Columbus is able and is capable of upsetting those um, clear favorites which we have seen also in the last year's playoffs. So uh, my tip however I will just take my marker. I do believe that Toronto will win this one. However, I'm not sure. I think it will be very tight. Very tight. I'm predicting a five-game series and a 3-2 victory for Toronto. I do believe that, uh, yes, it would be it will be played in Toronto. So definitely that would be a advantage for Toronto Maple Leafs. That it will be in their home arena. And I think that that also may be the deciding factor why Toronto would win this one. I don't know, I just feel like it would be Toronto that would have upper hand in this series, however it would be very tight and I wouldn't be surprised at all if Columbus would come out on the top, or at the top. Thank you very much guys for watching this video, we are at the end, please subscribe, it would mean a lot to me guys if you already haven't, leave a like and also comment who is your favorite to win this series, who you would be cheering for and why do you think that your team or why do you think that Toronto, why do you think that Columbus will win this series? Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video and stay safe. I will talk to you again probably very soon and we'll see each other. At least I hope. Bye guys.